What is up, Watch Fam? I am Christian from Theo and Harris. And, and I'm Rolando <laughs> from Theo and Harris. Uh, what we're going to do now is, it is a new series. It's, uh, it's a reissue of a series we used to do called Liquor Run. So we're basically going to bring you guys a bit of value every Friday by, uh, by giving you a wine tip. My dad's a bit of an authority on wine, so I think that we're going to bring him along. But I'd like to say that I thought I was being interviewed for an NPR Tiny Desk yeah. concert, so I <laughs> let my beard. beard grow out. So. But I guess it's not it. It's not it. I guess before we jump into it, uh, introduce yourself, who you are a little bit, you know, why it is that you are doing this series. I've had a, I've had a passion for wine for the past 21 years. I know you love to talk about value watches. Value watch I scour everywhere, every wine shop looking for value in wine. And uh, this one we're going to talk about today. Yep represents that cool to me you know the reason why i think this the series liquor run we're going to do it every week is so important is because i think it'll make it clear just how what we talk about value transcends far beyond watches the whole idea is just value bringing the consumer the most per dollar that's what i'm yeah that's kind of what i'm figuring out every day i'm more passionate about than you know than even watches it's you guys saying thanks chris that was awesome that to me is awesome I couldn't agree with you more. So although these very short Friday videos are not about watches, we have to give a little bit of a wristwatch check. So, Jack, what do you got? My GMT. <laughs> GMT Master 2, uh, and I'm wearing a Movado Triple Date, which is actually available on the shop. So uh, what are we drinking today? Today we're drinking a lovely, simple Chianti. It's called uh, Grignano Chianti Rufina 2011 from Tuscany. It's a Sangiovese-based wine. Okay. You're going to love it. Okay, cool. Let's try it. Oh. Cheers. Let's, let's give it a little swirl. Basically, the whole series is going to be 10 to $15 in price range, but stuff that could really kind of pack a lot of punch. How much was it again? This wine cost me nine bucks. Nine bucks. Okay, so if we're going to break it down, what do you look for in a wine? How do you assess it? Well, first, I look for color. And this is not, this is a very unconventional wine glass. Okay. But I will tell you that this, this wine has a beautiful, beautiful ruby color. Okay. Okay. Beautiful rim. Okay, so it's very fresh. Mm -hmm. uh, nose. Again, bright fruit, cherries, blackberries. It even it even has it even has a little bit of anise to the nose. Classic Chianti, sour cherry, that, predominant that on the palate. Yep. Rustic uh, but not yeah. rugged. This wine is an awesome food wine. It complements yeah. food, rustic food, red sauce, Pizza. bruschetta. Pizza. Yeah, yeah bruschetta Absolute. would be great. Right? Right? A little fresh tomato, Love a little it. onion, Absolutely. toast. This one and although does that it. may you may perceive that as a more of a, a, a fall winter, you can absolutely have that on a cool summer after you know night. Do you think the Italians are no. waiting for the winter to no. have it? Come on. <laughs> no way. For me, I mean like th this is the this is the parallel. A nine dollar Chianti that we're actually sitting here enjoying, someone who's you know very casually wine and someone who's very heavily into wine, that's to me like appreciating, you know, a, a, a vintage boulevard. Right, a watch for two hundred and fifty dollars that packs a hell of a lot of punch next to Rolexes all day long. That's right. Right. Yeah. One thing that I hate, I despise, is always the peacocking uh, in wine. It's very easy to go out and buy the most expensive wine and talk with your chest puffed out yeah. about how great this wine is. And you're right, it is is easy. Those are no brainers. Yeah. But isn't it wonderful? To find that 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 small boutique wine, yeah. dollar for dollar, it's that killer. wine gives you the same pleasure that yeah. that hundred dollar bottle of wine will, will do. Oh, it's not a wine for meditation, but it's wine to have with others, to share, to laugh, yeah. to smile, to eat, yeah. and to drink. Just like watches, not every wine can be. If you have a budget, which everyone does, right? This is super expensive wine. We listed a, a, a watch on on on, on theoandhash.com, a Wittenauer. Right, it's like three hundred bucks. Right, it's an automatic watch. To me, that watch reminds me of budgets, right? Because for three hundred dollars, you're putting up with the big boys. You're, you know, let's say you can't afford an Omega. Let's say you don't have the money for a Seamaster right now, but you're getting a you know a beautiful watch, mint condition. I'm not plugging the watch. The point is that watch is reminding me of bringing value uh, to a consumer. That's what this is all about. That's what this does. What do you want to say about Chianti in particular, in, you know, specifically? Chianti is one of the, the foremost regions of wine production in, in Italy. Chianti is located in Tuscany. But for, for Italian Americans, up until recently, uh, Chianti was always a flask-like 
Oh, right. Would you put the candle in it? The right? candle yeah. and the wicker around yeah, it. And, around. and it was just really cheap wine. Chianti production and imports into America, right. have the quality has, has improved exponentially. Dramatically. So now we've got this, this, this abundance of great Italian wine at a great price. This wine, this uh, Fattoria Grignano Chianti Rufina, uh, spends about 12 to 15 months in French oak barrels. Nice. You taste it. Right. It has a little bit of grip, right. but then it spends three months in bottle aging yep. before it hits the market. Yep. So it, it's, a, it's a young wine. Great. Okay, we're drinking the 2011. Yeah. Okay, there are 2013s out there as well. These are available on the market now. They're delicious. New Jersey, New York, you know, you're seeing a lot of that influence from that part of the world, right? Italy. Yes. Uh, here in restaurants, literally almost everywhere yeah. you, you go, there's an Italian, you know, restaurant doing antipasto or pizza. And that's why this wine, to me, is such a perfect wine to start off yeah. the series with, is it's relevant. Absolutely, it's, it's relevant. It's a relevant yeah. wine to, you know, to where we are and, and probably where you guys are as far as, you know, uh, metropolitan areas and stuff like that. Yeah. I would take this wine over a um, Rufino wine, mm -hmm. the, the simple Rufino. You find that everywhere in mass-produced wine. Nothing wrong with that wine, but, but it doesn't it's, have it's, it's it doesn't it doesn't have the body, the shape. It's a little bit more artisanal. They're not charging a ton of money for this wine. No. Get to know Grignano. So if you actually do pass Grignano in the liquor store this weekend, I recommend. We recommend. I recommend. You recommend yeah. much more so than anybody to pick this up. So you're gonna have Italian food. It really is perfect. Uh, like we said, it's all about, you know, thunder per dollar, right? We all have budgets and we're kind of just acting accordingly. 100%. A lot of value, a lot of flavor. Let's have some wine. Cheers. Cheers. Salud. <laughs> I want to thank my dad for being in the episode. I put my hand out for a shake. <laughs> And we're going to do this every week, guys, to give you guys a little bit of advice Friday going into the weekend to impress some, uh, impress some people, uh, you know, at, at parties or at dinners or whatever it is. Uh, cheap, sometimes, if you're smart, is better. And we're going to prove it to you. Boom! Watch, fam. <laughs> Come on. This is such a great series. I'm so happy with this already. <laughs>